Hi, everybody. My name is Fran Cumway. I'm a registered nurse and a yoga therapist at Wild Cornell Medical Center in New York City. And I want to thank you all for being with me this evening and for watching these videos. And special thanks, as always, to Vanessa Dudley for putting this all together. So let's just come to sit well, take your seat, whether it's on the floor, on a blanket, on a block, or in a chair, and just come to close your eyes. And I found a great quote for today. This is by Rabbi Harold Kushner. This is great. I recently ran across a story about a Native American tribal leader describing his own inner struggles. He said, there are two dogs inside of me. One of the dogs is mean and evil. <clears throat> evil. The other dog is good. <clears throat> the mean dog fights the good dog all the time. Someone asked him which dog usually wins. And after a moment's reflection, he answered, the one I feed the most. So I can certainly apply that to my, my own thinking on a daily basis. So just something to think about. What do we feed the most? So come to close your eyes. Bring your hands in prayer in front of your heart. And we'll do one home together to join our energy. Deep breath in. Oh. So today's class is going to be focused on the lymphatics. And we did something like that last week, um, but I had a request to do it again. And so I have come up with a few uh, other things that I think might be interesting. So I'm just gonna first um, just talk just a little bit. We've, we've done stuff before for open hearts, open lungs, open pelvis, hips, pelvic floor. Um, but we're going to focus on the lymphatics in our mind's eye and the subtle body as we move through this practice today. So the lymphatic, just in case there's any questions, it's like a secondary circulatory system. So it's a, an intricate series and networking of organs and glands and vessels, and it helps to filter out pathogens, viruses, and bacteria, and introduce them to white blood cells and elicit the immune response. So it's also responsible for maintaining a healthy fluid balance in the body. And the lymphatic system is, uh, has been known to filter out up to two liters of fluid a day. That's an awful lot of fluid that has leaked out of the capillaries that, that gathers in the tissues. It can gather in the tissues of the ankles and the legs and in the, in the lungs. Um, and by getting rid of two liters of fluid, that certainly would make breathing a heck of a lot easier if you are having trouble breathing. Um, so the movement of lymphatic is facilitated by two ways. One is muscle contraction. So the muscle contraction acts like a bellows and it will move lymphatics up towards the heart. And then the other factor is the expiration. So when we, um, when we take an exhale, it increases increases the thoracic pressure in, uh, up here in the chest, and that acts like a sucking mechanism, and it takes the lymph, and it goes to facilitate the movement of the lymph into the thoracic duct, which will bring it into the circulatory system. So it's a really nice mechanism to help clean up the um, excess fluid in the body. It doesn't have a pump like the heart has, like the arteries have with the heart, and it doesn't have valves like the, like the veins have as part of the circulatory system. So movement, contraction, and breath. So that's why yoga is really uh, beneficial for moving lymphatics. So first thing we're gonna do is if you have a ball, um, we're gonna take that ball and we're gonna do, actually, you know what? Take your block first. We, got, we did this the other day. Um, so you're gonna take the block, you're gonna lie down on your belly. And you're going to take the block and you're just going to put it under your armpit. And you're going to lie, I'm lying on my left side, 
So we did this last week. And the block is a really good tool. I tried to use a, a can of um, tomatoes. It, it didn't work. It's too, it's too hard. I even wrapped it in something. It's just, it doesn't cut it. But you could use a ball. I have a bigger ball here today. Um, but just get the, the block under the axilla and just, just, let's just stay here for a few breaths. You can just relax. Your forearms are on the floor. And I want you to, to use the subtle body. The visualization technique that we can we can send our energy anywhere in the body and we are visualizing the lymphatics in this area they're so close to the thoracic duct it's going right in so it doesn't have to go too far and you can use your breath here and we're using movement via the pressure of the block under the axillary now just roll a little bit back and forth on your block however it's comfortable it's really anywhere under the armpit that you can feel this movement. And again, especially on the exhale, you can feel, you can, you can, you can visualize that you feel that movement, this fluidity going into the thoracic duct. And then come a little bit more, just slightly more on the back now. Just a little bit, not, not totally on your back, but getting to the back part, beginning of the scapula, and then come over to the front again, and just get the front of the axilla, and the tissue, the fatty tissue, the breast tissue here, and then press your hands into the floor, and move up. And then we'll come to sit in our beach pose on the other side, so for me, I'm on my right side, and I'm going to start with the block at an angle. So I'm going to take, just angle the block and just get into the axilla first, especially the front part. And I'm just going to stay here. You can rest your head on your hand and just come in here and just start to wake this up. It, it's an area that doesn't really get much, um, nobody really, even when you go for a massage, very few people touch under the axilla. So it's good to get in there. So use your breath to visualize, especially the exhale. And now you can start to rock a little bit back and forth. And do that according to your own breath and to your own rhythm. And then just a little bit towards the back. And I'm going to rock a little bit. And then back again towards the center, more towards the front. And then I'm going to come on up. Okay. So now we're going to do a similar thing with the legs. So if you don't have a ball, I think we can we can uh, improvise with the block. So I'm gonna, I have a ball, I'll show that on the other side. I'm gonna start with my left thigh, the low left thigh, and I'm just gonna come down on my, um, I'll be on my right knee on the outer aspect of the, or the inner aspect of the right knee. And I have that right leg, and I can't see me. Let me move back. So I'm in this, like a little gentle hip opener here. This, this thigh is on the floor. And I've just got the block on my lower thigh. So if you don't have a ball, put the block there. And it, it, it actually serves really nice. If it's too much, you can put a, um, you can put a blanket on top, of the, on top of the block too. And then just roll back and forth at the lowest part of your thigh. So there's a lot of lymph nodes down by the knee as well. We always think of them in the groin, in the pelvis, and in the, in the neck. But they're, they're all over the place. They're in the ankles. And now come up to the mid thigh. So notice we're going from distal to proximal, from far away from the heart towards the heart. And then rock a little bit. And then come up again. I'm gonna move back and then come into the into the um, the hip joint. And again, just see if you can feel the femoral pulse. We, we talked about this last week. It's not a biggie if you don't feel it. 
it's just a, it's a, it's a thick artery and it's bound and it's, there's a lot of lymph nodes around it. But you can't go wrong if you're right there in the hip crease and you can just make some circular movements going one way and then going the other. And you're not putting all your body weight on. That, this, this is maybe not the most relaxing thing, but it doesn't, it should not be like a painful thing. And then come up and then we're gonna switch it out. So I'm gonna use the, the, um, the block's really not a bad way to go at all. So I just found this. I don't, I have no idea where I got it. So I'm gonna get that right on my low thigh. And I'm gonna have my forearms on the floor and my opposite knee is out and up. And I'm just rocking back and forth. So we're squeezing, we're, we're providing movement for our skeletal muscles here so they can act like a bellows going up towards the heart. And this is also very good for the myofascial connective tissue, that series, that network of uh, intricacies that surround the entire body. It's, it's like a, it's like the fishnet stocking around the entire body. So we're getting into the layers of that. So there's so many beneficial reasons to do this kind of work. And then come down again, or come up again, I should say. And then you're getting in there. And then you can get into this line. And just make some circular motions. And I had to back off, that was a little too hard for me, a little too much. So I was putting too much of my body weight and I could feel that. So just adjust as you see fit. And if you are not down on the floor, you can just massage your legs just with your hands. Just give yourself a really nice lymphatic massage. And we'll, we'll demonstrate that in, in another second. And then come to hold it in the femoral, uh, the, the hip joint and just visualize what you're doing. You're, Stimulating your lymphatics. This fluid is moving back into the circulatory system, enhancing our immune system. And then we're going to come on up. And just come to sit for a second. You can sit on your block, sit on a, a blanket. And I just want you to pause and just notice. Just notice if you feel any tingling or any sensation. We won't stay here long, but it's just good to notice. Okay. Oh, I think that light might be too much. I'm going to shut that off one second. So, let's see. Ah, okay. So, now, if you are not down on the floor, we're, we're going to do our arms. You'll take your wrist and you're just going to slide your opposite hands from the wrist up to the elbow. So you don't want to slide down this way because because of dependent edema and because of gravity, fluid's going to go down. You want to release any gravity, especially if you just had breast surgery, and you want to propel the movement back up towards the thoracic region. So that's one way to do it. If you're not coming down to the floor, you don't have a block, all those things. If you have a ball, and I could even use a tennis ball, but I've got this one. So I'm going to just take it, and I'm going to, sitting on my left side, I've got the ball under my left wrist, and I've got my right hand on the floor for support, and I'm just moving the ball gently up, and then I bring the ball back. So I move it up. I don't roll it back down on my hand because then that would be negating. So from the wrist up to the elbow and then flip the back ball back to you. From the wrist up, just one more time like this on this side and then we'll switch. And of course, if you're sitting, you're just giving yourself, you can even give it a ringing out. And that's another thing that yoga, in this yoga practice today, you'll be thinking of the word ringing out. Okay, so we are, I'm sitting on my right hip now, and I've got the ball here under my, my right wrist, and I'm going to just slide it up towards my elbow, pull the ball back, slide it up, pull it back, 
And you can do this as slowly as you need to. One more time. And then back. Okay. So, you know, and you can use these things. You can put them under your feet. We did that last week. We'll do another class on that too for myofascial release. But um, you can put them under your buttocks if you have uh, sciatica. So if there's any requests for things like that, just let me know and we'll work around it. Okay, so, all right, let's see. So we're gonna come to sit. So I'm sitting on my block. I sit on it the medium way, whoops. <clears throat> I sit on it the medium way, sometimes the small way, but I'm gonna sit on it the medium way today. So you're gonna take your arms straight out in front of you, inhale, exhale, inhale, open it up, and as you exhale, interlace your fingers behind you. Notice which way you interlace your fingers. We talked about that, habitual patterns. So we are opening up this whole part of the chest for today's purposes, thinking about lymphatic flow up here. So there's a lot of lymph nodes in the neck. So we're going to inhale and exhale, turn the head to the right. Inhale to the center, exhale to the left. Inhale to center, exhale to right. One more time. Inhale to center, exhale to left. Now come back to center, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, let the arms go wherever they want. And then let them float down alongside you. Shake it out. Now, whichever way you interlace your fingers before, you probably did it in the habitual way. So now, take the arms out. Exhale, bring the hands behind you and interlace them in the weird way. Very scientific term. So take them the opposite way, the non-habitual way. And good. Feel all of this tissue opening here. Your thoracic duct is opening. You're making, you're clearing a pathway to the movement of lymphatics. Great to do during this free fun and also during this crazy time that we are living in. Inhale. Exhale, turn the head to the left. Come back to center. Inhale. Exhale, turn to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn the head to the left. Keep the shoulders open. Come back to center on the in breath. Exhale to the right. Centering on the in breath. And exhale to the left. Close your eyes. Come back to center. Visualize whatever you think a duct looks like. Visualize it opening. Inhale. Exhale. Let the arms go. And bring the arms down, interlace your fingers, press the palms away. Notice the space behind your back, behind your lungs broadening. Do a little bit of rounding, but we're going to get in there. We're just going to broaden a little bit. Come back, interlace your fingers the other way, do it again. And take it out, engage your abdominals. Good. And then let go. Okay. Okay, oh, we're gonna to do this other thing. So, so you're gonna take your left hand to your right thigh, and then you're gonna take the right arm out, and you're gonna make figure eights. So we're getting into the chest, the neck, under the armpit, so getting that figure eight. So today's class is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be more fluid-like, kind of wave-like movement. And one more time like that, and then come back. And I, I do, that's such a nice stretch along the back here. I love that. Okay, right hand comes to the left eye. Take your, your left arm out and make your figure eights that way. Use your breath. Very wave-like motion. And come back. Okay, let's bring the arm and the shoulders up, back down and around. 
up, back, down, and around. Get the hands in there. Two for one sail. Shoulders and hands and elbows. Wow, look at us. Three for one sail. Shake it out. And then you're going to come. You can sit on a blanket for this one. And you're going to sit. I like to use the triangle under the, the blanket. I just did a nice, like this piece here. As opposed to the flat piece, I like to get that triangle and I put that under the pelvic floor. So we're going to come to sit with the legs wide open. <clears throat> we're targeting the adductors here, of course, and the, the groin, the flexors, or the whole joint in here. So you're just going to sit here just for a, a few seconds, maybe about 30 seconds, the feet are flexed, and just gently just come back and forth, just sliding back and forth. So you want to make sure your back is not rounding, your shoulders are back, and you want to feel that lift under your armpits. We just worked in there. Think of that block, you know, just making space. That's what yoga is all about anyway, making space. Now we're going to turn some butter. That's the only way I can describe it. I think of my grandmother in Ireland. Churning butter. So the heels are pressed into the floor, and I'm going, I'm, I'm happy to be going clockwise. So you go whatever way you need to go. And make it thoughtful, mindful. Think about what's happening to the groin towards the hip, hip creases where there are tons of of lymph nodes here. The whole body is, is a, a system of them. So, but this is where our concentration of them are, and we're getting in there. Mobilizing, and again, creating this wave-like movement. Other way now. And getting a great stretch in the back of the leg, as well as the shoulders and the back. So it's a nice fluidity to it. Use your breath. Especially your exhale, you can even make it longer. Very mindful about the exhale and the effect on the intrathoracic pressure. And then come back, bring your hands to the floor and the feet are pointed up and you are bringing your shoulder blades on your back. Engaging the pelvic floor and engaging the abdomen. I'm not going to talk about those things too much, but you still want to have that integration. You can even create that uh, isometric um, feeling by pressing your fingers, the pads of the fingers, into the floor and moving back, and it will engage your pelvic floor. And then let go and notice what happens. And then do it again and notice the engagement. It's really amazing, such a small isometric contraction like that has. And then let go. Okay, so now we're going to come to tabletop. So your hands are under your shoulders, knees are under your hip, and then we're just going to make clockwise movements with the hips. So we're going in one way. Again, you could go counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. You're your own person, you go however you want. And then go the other way. So now we're thinking about targeting the lymph, the lymph nodes in the abdomen. Think about when you're exhaling, bringing your navel back to your spine. And then just come to hold, do a few cat cows, and then we'll move into some deeper movement. So inhale to look up, exhale down. Inhale to look up and then exhale down. Okay, so now you're going to take your hands out just maybe um, three inches in front of you, and you can open up the hands here. They don't have to be just a shoulder width. Curl your back to your toes under, lift your back, your, your legs, and come into your downward dog. Actually, having the arms wide like this is a really nice break. To do every once in a while. Bend one knee as the other one straightens, and then bend the other, and toggle back and forth. 
So now I'd like you to bring your attention to your ankles. And there are lymph nodes down there too. Lots of capillaries. There's a lot of lymph nodes, a lot of edema they collect here, again, because of the, the situation with gravity too. And then come to hold it. And then bend both knees, bring your hips as far away from your hands as you can, and now straighten your legs. Your biceps are pointing up, triceps are rolling down to the best that you can. And visualize your lymph nodes in your ankles and your knees being stimulated and mobilizing fluid. Inhale and exhale now, come into plank. Gonna hold plank just for a little bit. Think about a long line of lymph, lymphatics from your toes to your heels, up the legs, to the torso, up the neck, to the head. Inhale, exhale, bring your knees down and then rise up. So you're standing on your knees. You're gonna take your right foot out. And let's see, okay, so you've got the right foot out. Bring your hands on your right thigh. You're gonna curl your left toes under, lift your back knee, and bring that back leg up. So now we're gonna bend the front knee, but you're gonna turn your left foot to the outer edge, to the left side of the mat, the long left edge of the mat. So it's, it's pointing out that way. My right toes are pointing towards you, and the other toes, toes are pointing that way. Bend the front knee, and we're gonna come into we do a lot of static holding poses and very linear kind of poses. Today, it's going to be more fluid-like, maybe a little bit more dream-like, and again, getting in tune with the rhythm of the lymphatic. So it's going to be very hippie. Yay. All right, bring the arms out. So you're, uh, and I'm not going to go too crazy over uh, just, you know, how you're lined up, but just your front knee is over the ankle to say, You've been hearing me say this for a couple of weeks now, so I'm sure you're all expert. So we're in our warrior two. Now we're going to get fluidy, okay? So from here, you're going to come into reverse warrior. And in reverse warrior, the left hand usually comes to the back of the thigh. We're going to make it like that there's a, a ball of energy between our two hands. So here's our reverse warrior. And then here's our side angle warrior. So you've got your right forearm on the right thigh, and you've got this, this orb of light, this magic ball here between your hands. Inhale, come back to warrior two, and then fluidly come back to reverse. Come to warrior two, and then come to side angle. Make it your own now. So from warrior two, you can decide how you want to move your arms, and then you can come back to warrior two, and then come to side angle. So there's more of a pulsation with it. Using your breath. Warrior two, side angle. And then back to warrior two with these fluid like arms. And then back to reverse angle. The front knee stays bent the whole time. The back leg is straight. We'll do that again. One more time like this. So it's kind of more like a dance, except the feet are, are pretty static. And then come back to your warrior two. Come back. And then you're going to turn, pivot towards the front. You're pivoting on your back toes, and you're bringing your left knee down. Bring your hands alongside the right foot. So from here, curl your back toes under and straighten your back leg, straighten your left leg. Get a nice long stretch here. And again, this is a pose that we hold for long periods of time, just not today. And you can also use your blocks. So don't forget, like I did, if you want to use them, you can have them up here as the biggest, middle, or the smallest. So whatever is right for you. Back leg straight. Now we're gonna inhale, keep your back straight too. And on the exhale, drop the left knee just to kiss the floor. Inhale up, exhale down. Think of the lymph, the network of lymph vessels in the leg. 
and where that limp is going right now on the left side, going back up through the, the movement and the breath of your body. Back and forth at your pace. And then the next time, keep the left knee down. Take your blocks. And I kind of like to have them at the, at the highest end here. And I'm going to stretch my right leg out. So my right leg out is straight out in front of me. So from here, I'm going to toggle back and forth. Get a nice stretch. First, feel what's going on in the back of the leg now. The, the toes are flexed. They can be pointed. Flex makes it a little bit more challenging. Inhale here. Exhale. Bend the front knee and come into the proposal lunge. Come back. Inhale. Exhale forward. Make sure that your shoulders are not rounded. They might be a little bit of rounded when you go back, but just you can move your blocks with you. Now, here's another thing. If you feel that you have the balance, take your hand, we're in this, uh, take your hand on your ankle, straighten the leg as the hips come back and slide the hand up to the knee. And then as you exhale and come into the proposal lunge from the knee to the hip. Inhale, come down, bring that hand up to the knee, and then exhale, come forward, bring the hand from the knee to the hip. So getting a massage. Take your hand, facilitating limb drainage. Just gently squeeze. Do not do these exercises if you have a history of DBT, blood clots. You don't want to squeeze your legs like that. So one more time like this, hand down, and then up. And you can bring it all the way up here. Good. And then just get into, you can even put your hand in yeah. the crease of the, uh, of the right hip. And just give a little massage in here on the hip, on the outside, and then come back. And we'll come into downward facing dog. Notice your right leg compared to your left. Bend both knees. Biceps up, navel engaged, straighten your knees, and now float your torso to be in plank, straight leg, bring your knees down, and now we're going to come down sequentially. This is a nice massage, so you're going to bring your thighs, but keep the integrity of your shoulders. Don't collapse. Thighs, pelvis, abdomen, ribs, chest, and head. We're going to come into cobra. So bring your hands to mid-chest area, and they're on the floor. You can open them up a little bit too, but just make sure your elbows are pointing back. They don't have to be like a toy soldier. You can open them up a little bit. Press your feet into the floor, your toenail, and now lift your chin, bring your chin up, and stay here for a few breaths. We're gonna make this a little bit more dynamic in a second, but I want you to feel the uh, effects that this pose has from the pubic bone up through, up to your upper thoracic and ribs. All right, so now we're going to think about all the lymphatics that we can channel and, and target here. Inhale, come on down. So we're going to do that a few times. Press into the floor, not too hard. Bring your, uh, slide your chin forward as the head and shoulders come up, shoulder blades down. And then exhale, tuck the chin as you come on down. Inhale, slide the chin out and up. Nice and easy movements. Exhale, tuck the chin as the forehead comes down. One more time, chin comes up, come up, and exhale down. Think about the mobilization that just happened there. Just give a little shifting back and forth on the torso. Think about wringing out those lymphatics, just like you would wring out a dish towel. And then press with your hands and come to kneel. This time we're going to take the left foot out. You're going to bring your hands on your left thigh, curl your back toes under, lift your back knee, and then you're going to take that right foot. It's at a 90 degree angle forward, going straight ahead here, and my foot is facing you. 
Okay, so uh, it's one foot, my right foot is facing the long edge on the right side of the mat, and my left toes are pointing towards, towards you. So again, I'm not gonna get too crazy with um, all of the elements of it, but just make sure that knee's over the ankle. So now we're in this kind of Woodstock kind of feeling, right? We're gonna get jiggy. So now you're in your warrior two, and we're gonna inhale, come into your reverse warrior, and then come back to your warrior two, and then come into your side angle if you need to lean on the thigh, that's okay. And then you can come back to warrior two, make any fluid kind of movement. I don't know where I got the idea of the ball between my hand, but I kind of like it. And then come back, use your breath. Notice how your breath is really inspiring this movement. And then come down on the exhale. Inhale back to your warrior two. And then exhale back to your reverse warrior. If this is too much on your front knee, don't do it. You come out of it. We're not going to be here much longer. Think about the wave-like motions and how you are helping your body, how you're facilitating the flow of wind. And then come back to your warrior to hold it, make any kind of fluid movement you want, like a dance. And then turn, pivot your right foot to face the front. Woo! And then bring your back knee down. I've got a block, so I'm going to use it. And now I've got another block. Okay, so let's come into proposed the lunge first. So the, the left knee is bent. And we're going to bring the hands down. I'm going to use the blocks here. And I'm going to press my hands into the blocks. And I'm just lifting, I'm straightening my right leg. And I want to get longer. I can feel I'm rounding a little bit, so I want to elongate my torso. Inhale here, exhale, let the right knee touch the floor. Inhale up, exhale down. Think about the squeezing action that the knee, the whole leg, the whole right leg is getting, and then the squeezing and compression that your left groin is getting just from the position it's in. So up and down a few more times like this. Head and neck in alignment. And then bring the knee down. Pause for a second. And then take your blocks as you stretch out your left leg. So the toes are up. Ooh, that was a good stretch. The toes are up. And from here, we're going to inhale. And then on the exhale, you're going to bend the front knee as you come forward into the proposal. Inhale, straighten the left knee. Exhale, bend. Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. Now take your left hand. Inhale, massage from the ankle to the thigh to the to the knee. And exhale, massage from the knee to the groin as you bend. Take that hand back down again. Inhale, slide it up. Exhale, slide it up. Inhale to slide up. You're not squeezing hard, but you're augmenting it. And down. Inhale. And exhale. The hips are coming forward. Inhale. The hips come back as you massage up. Exhale. The hips move forward. One more time. Inhale. Massage up. And then exhale. Bring that in. Okay. Now, come into... Bring your hands down, take, take your hands a little bit wider than under your shoulders, curl your back toes under, and come into another downward dog. Pedal it out. And now we're just gonna slow things down. Now we're gonna come into plank, and then bring your knees down. If you don't twist, don't do this, but if you do, if you can, you can take your right hand and your right arm and you're going to slide it, oh, you're going to slide it underneath your left armpit as you bring the outside of the right arm and the outside of the right head to the floor. Breathe. Slow it down, but know that your breath is facilitating the flow. 
inhale to come up. And then the opposite. Take that arm, the left arm, slide it underneath your right armpit, and you're on the outside of your right head, right shoulder, looking underneath. And come back up. And now make your way to be on your back. And we'll just do one more thing for the abdominals. So bring your knees into your chest. And then bring your knees away and keep your hands on the upper outer calves. So on the inhale, you're opening. On the exhale, you're pulling your knees into your chest and your elbows are bent. Inhale, elbows straight as you open up. Exhale, massage for the abdomen and pelvis. Inhale, exhale. Go as fast as it's right for you. So we'll do 10, 9. You take it at your pace. I'm just counting for myself. I think that's 7, 6. So it's a pumping. 5, it shouldn't hurt. 3, 4, <laughs> 3, 2, and 1. Bring the legs up. Another great thing to do. If you have lymphedema, point flex, point flex, point flex, take the legs out, point flex, make circles. Such a great thing to do for lymphatic flow. Bring the legs back, crisscross, crisscross, and then hold the knees in one more time. So good for the lower back. And then with control, bring one foot down first, and then bring the other one down and slide your, your get ready for shavasana. So you can use whatever you need to put under your knees, your head. Um, if you need to put something over your body, please feel free and come into your shavasana. Notice if there's any Space or sensation that you might feel, any variation in sensation, and let your mind rest there. See if you notice any tingling. Maybe, maybe not. And just take the next few minutes in silence.
on the right and neck. Exhale, be really long. Think about the effect that that has on the chest. Move your body in a fluid like way, however, it feels like to you. And we're going to lie on one side, and you'll make your way up. And we're going to do, to do a, the breath of fire, which I think really plays in well with um, the work that we've been doing for lymphatics today. And then a meditation that is really nice. Uh, so I won't go, it won't be too much longer, but um, it's, it's nice to try these two particular elements in for a whole for a longer yoga class. So um, we've done this before, and I'm going to go um, grab the tissue. Uh, and if you need one, go grab one. It's probably a good idea to have it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so and make sure you wash your hands after this. So touching your face, you want to be the other kid. So it's that breath of fire. It's, um, again, very scientific term. You're trying to get schmutz out of your nose. That's the best description that I can give. So it's like this. So it's a sharp expulsion of air on the, through the nose on the exhale. You don't have to worry about inhaling. It's going to happen through the force of rapid, uh, through the force of the atmosphere. The pressure of the atmosphere will force you to take a breath. So you don't even have to worry about it. It's all about the exhale. So it's we'll do five of them together, and we're using the abdominal. So the thrust comes from here. There should be no machinations up here with the head or with the arms. It's not like it's not that. It's all from here from your diaphragm, okay? And that, again, is creating this incredible change in the pressure uh, between the abdominal and the pelvic cavity. So that's so good for lymphatic flow. Okay, so we'll do this together five times, then we'll do 10, then we'll do 20. And at the end, we'll do a little breath retention exercise. So we'll start together, take a breath in, a normal breath, exhale, normal breath, Inhale, half a breath, and start. Exhale, slow, and then inhale. So good to do, especially now. Okay. Come back, you might feel, they call it soul shining breath, too. So it makes you feel, it can make you feel a little dizzy. So if you have uncontrolled hyper, hypertension, which I don't think anybody on this class does, you should not do this. Uh, if you have high blood pressure, but it is controlled, do it slow. I'm doing it pretty slow, but you can do it as well. For now, 10, take a, just come back to homeostasis. Come back to that for a few minutes. Take a regular breath in. And exhale. Half a breath. And start. Exhale deeply, long, and then inhale. And breathe, come back to your breath. Back to balance. And then we'll do 20. <clears throat> so at the end of this one, on the exhale, you're going to drop your chin and keep the breath out. So you're going to stay. At, you're going to keep that uh, suspension out. We'll stay here for just a few seconds. Then we'll lift the head up, the chin up, and then we'll take our breath in. Okay. So I'll I'll guide you through. So it's just that um, retention. It's not a retention. It's a suspension of breath after the last exhale and the chin up. Okay. So and if you don't get it, just don't worry about it. Okay. So have a regular breath in. And exhale, and then half the breath in, and start. Mm -hmm. 
Exhale, hold it out, drop the chin. Don't inhale. Don't inhale as you lift the chin. And now fill your lungs with breath. And just feel how that changes your prana, your life force energy. <clears throat> Notice any subtle differences. You can give you a little boost. So now let's come to close our eyes and building on working through <clears throat> things that don't serve us anymore, getting rid of uh, filtering out toxins, pathogens. Now we're going to work on burning it out through the subtle guide. So close your eyes, come to a comfortable position that you can sustain for the next three or four minutes. And just breathe normally. Bring your attention now to your solar plexus, which is right above your belly button in that area. And you notice operative word, solar plexus, lots of things going on, it's like 10 stations on many, many levels. Top head of metabolic activity going on here. Nerve glands, lymph. Chakras, all sorts of stuff. So, again, now we're thinking with the word solar, I want you to think of a, um, a flame. And bring your mind's eye to this area of your body and visualize a flame there in the solar plexus. And according to Ayurvedic medicine, there is. So just visualize that flame getting very bright and burning very, very bright. And on your next inhale, imagine that the inhale sweeps the flame to the uh, upside down. So the tip of the flame is pointing towards the abdominal organs and the pelvis. And on your next exhale, flip the flame to the right side as you exhale. Any impurities. So on the inhale, flip the flame down to burn off that which does not hurt you. And on the exhale, flip it up so it should help to move anything your tissues and your thoughts, your mind, your words, your deeds, your body, anything about you. So we'll do this on our own for the next two minutes. So we inhale the flame, push down, burning any improvements. So we exhale the flame.
Presence in your room, in your body, um, whatever surface is on, feel the weight of your body, your physicality. Come together as a group again. Even though this is virtual, we're not going to be able to do it. And then we'll bring our hands together and then we'll go to the bottom of the heart. Maybe have a peaceful mind and ease the body and a useful life. Namaste, everybody. Thank you. Happy lymphatics. <laughs>